Hello friends, hope you're doing great today. I am coming back with an update on the English conscript that is supposed to look like a syllabary and act kind of like a syllabary, although it can't technically be a syllabary. Um, if you haven't seen that video, uh, check it out. And if you have seen that video, make sure you look at the comments because I got some stuff wrong in the video, like the first part of the video. I should have done a little bit more research, so some people in the comments corrected me on some stuff, so definitely check that out. Yeah, what you're looking at right now is the second version, which is very different, um, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm gonna go over my process on how I got to where this is um, but just like in the last video if you don't care and you just want to skip to the demonstration and the key of this specific version the final version just skip to 1637 for that so yeah uh, this actually is the same passage that I used in the other one in the other uh, script where I had the really long text but it looks completely different. So I'm gonna go through all the all the different versions um, as best as I can remember. I'm sure I won't be able to remember everything, but um, basically I ended off last time and I first thought maybe I could fix some of the problems that I had just by kind of messing around with what I already had, right? Not really changing too much just kind of shifting things around. So one problem I had was that the S was this shape and it was really awkward to put uh, by things. I don't, I don't even remember how to write, like it would never connect, right? And I didn't like that. So all I did was replace, here, let me go. So basically I kind of just tried shifting around what letters were or what, right? So the S was now this symbol, and then um, this symbol, which I didn't like being at the end of words, uh, I would gave to like really rare sounds, right? So that actually helped a lot, um, and I thought that was a decent improvement. And another idea I had was to basically just make the glottal stop character just be used as the blank, right? So I, I mentioned that the vowels can get really tricky because there's only one way to write them. But if you use a blank marker, then you can uh, put them at the beginning of a syllable, right? So I could just use the glottal stop as a marker in that way. And I was looking at this and I realized that having the vowels as diacritics basically makes this um, an abugido, right? Where the vowels and the constants aren't on the same level. The vowels are added after um, and they're off to the side. And so one idea I had to try to fix this was to not put them at the side, but basically push things in to where Let's see if I can write it. So instead of writing something like this, I would write it like this um, and then continue to write the rest of the word like that. And that, I it got messy, I'll be honest. It got really awkward, especially with these types of letters and with these types of letters. Um, and I was running into a lot of problems. It, felt kind of weird. It, it did look a little bit better, I think, in some ways, but in other ways it looked way worse. So I ended up scratching that. Well, then I thought that I shouldn't have the vowels as diacritics. That makes it more of an abugida. So I gave each of these like their own, I gave each of the consonants like a little holder, right? And so it's now not um, it's not just that this is a diacritic that goes on the side of a letter, 
this entire thing together is the letter. And then you can just build uh, syllables the same as before. So let's see if I can write something. Oh yeah, and another thing that I got the idea of is that, so you see this is an R and this is an L, but you also see an R and an L here, right? So my idea was that, I can't remember if this means before or after, but let's say if there's an R before the vowel, like there's a, a ra, right? Then instead of writing the R symbol like this and then the a, uh, you make this change to this to the vowel. So you write it like this. And then you know that this means that there's an R in front, right? So that was one of my big ideas that I really liked. Um, I'm just gonna continue, keep writing strengths. Okay, so as you can tell, this is very long. I mean, strength is all, always looks long, but especially when you're no longer putting the vowel outside and you're making it as a whole another character. It makes it really look really big. And another thing is that this whole thing kind of focuses on connecting, right? Making making things look like they're all connected, but these don't really connect very well with anything, right? So if I'm gonna try to continue making things look like they need to be connected all the time, then this is an awkward system. But, okay, so this is some intermediate version. I think I got rid of the, I think I got rid of the thing I was working on, but you see how, Oh, I actually remember what this is. This was actually kind of cool. Okay, no, I can explain this. So what this was, so let's say this means eh, right? And then the syllable has a B in front, right? So it's like B, and maybe it's like big or something. So you, okay, so... <laughs> So basically what I'm doing here is I'm modifying this little vowel indicator to kind of form what consonant came before it in like a featural way. So if you don't know much about like, about um, phonetics, this might be confusing, but if it's, all right, how did I do this? So if it's, oh, this can only work with certain consonants so it's p b t d k g and right so you see that these are stops these are fricatives these are unvoiced these are voiced unvoiced voiced and then from here you kind of go like from the front of the mouth to the middle to the back i mean not exactly to the back, but you know what I mean? So what I did was if it was unvoiced, you left it like this. But if it was voiced, you add this little marker right here. And then if it's at the front of the mouth, you go here. Middle of the mouth, you go here. And then back of the mouth, you go here. And then if it's a fricative, you leave it like this. But if it's a stop, then you extend it over like this. So it's a way to like incorporate any of these um, 12 consonants if they start if they go right before a vowel so that's how you can that's why you can see these like weird symbols um, is you can do some 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 weird stuff uh, so that was kind of a cool system so after this I was like okay and this stuff isn't quite working. I need to do some I need to do some research, right? So I got down and dirty in the Wikipedia page for uh, English phonology and syllable structure. I don't know why I did this I, I don't know why I didn't do this before, but yeah, it was good, right? And so you see these are the rules for 
for what counts as an onset. Now, I should not introduce this without explaining how syllables are formed. So let me do that real quick. So you have a syllable, right? So the syllable is comprised. There's a coda. Wait, no, sorry. There's an onset. I totally didn't just forget that. And there's a rhyme. This is how Wikipedia spells it. I spelled it. I learned it like the normal word, but whatever. Um, and then the rhyme is composed of the nucleus and the coda. Right? So it's kind of fancy words, but all it really means is stuff constants before the vowel, the vowel, and constants after the vowel. Although the nucleus can't, doesn't have to be a vowel, um, but we'll get into that in a second. So, rules for things that can be an onset, right? So, you could have any single consonant besides ng. That's the only thing that can't be, that can't be by itself in the beginning of n of a syllable. Um, you could have a stop plus an approximate, and the approximate minus j, so you have, or minus y is what it means. So that includes la, ra, and wa, I believe. And then you could have a voiceless fricative or a v plus any approximate other than ya. Um, you could have a consonant plus a ya, as long as it's before those vowels. Um, you could have s plus a voiceless stop, s plus a nasal, any nasal besides ng, s plus a voiceless fricative, s plus a voiceless stop plus an approximate, or s plus a voiceless fricative plus a, an approximate. So there's a lot of small rules, but honestly, there's just a few things that we need to remember, right? We just need to remember the basic the basic formulas for an onset. So first of all, it could just be x just means anything, right? Like a variable. So the onset could just be one single letter, which could be basically anything besides not. Then we have something plus ya, something plus ra, something plus la and something plus wa, right? So you see something plus approximate, which is any of these, ra, la, wa. You have something plus an approximate. We have something plus a ya. So basically you're just looking to combine some other character plus one of these characters. And then the final section is just sa plus stuff, because sa, is so widely used and widely versatile in English. So you could do anything. You could even have su plus two things, right? So basically this is what it boils down to. So this is basically what we have to account for, right? So if we go over to the nucleus, nucleus is much more simple. We have vowels, and then these are all constants that can be used as the nucleus. These are called um, syllabic constants. Uh, I'm gonna try to think of an example. Oh, what about like the word sure, right? Because there's not actually a vowel here. You have sha plus an er, sure, <laughs> right? So this is the monosyllabic, or this is the syllabic r, the syllabic ra. So yeah, basically any of these will work. That's easy to figure out. Now, if you thought onset was complicated, coda is even more complicated. Coda is basically a free-for-all, right? So you can have basically any consonant by itself besides ha, wa, and ya. You can have a la plus a stop or an affricate or a fricative or a nasal. You could have ra plus a stop or an affricate or a fricative or a nasal. You could have a nasal plus a fricative, a nasal plus a homorganic stop or an affricate. Um, homorganic just means 
in the same place in the mouth as the nasal. So you can have an M plus a B because they both are bilabial. Um, and then we have a voiceless fricative plus a voiceless stop, two voiceless fricatives together or two voiceless stops together, a stop plus a fricative, L plus two consonants, R plus two consonants, a nasal plus a homorganic stop plus a stop or a fricative, or just three obstruents, which is basically all of the consonants. And just to add to that, basically any of these can either have a S, a Z, a T, or a D added to the end. So, basically what we learn here is that codas can be just about anything, right? But if we want to simplify it, we have a single consonant, right? We can do a L plus something, a R plus something, or a nasal plus something, right? We have a lot of Les and res and also nasals. Um, and then a lot of these are just basically something plus something or something plus something plus something. And you have to be prepared to add an S or a T to any of these, right? So for the most part, you have to come for everything, but things like these, you can try to shortcut. So. With that all out of the way, I don't think it was completely necessary, but with that all out of the way, we have version 2.0. This is what I came up with. I basically assigned the letters almost randomly, right? This is a duh, but if you, if you prefer things another way, just switch them around. It doesn't matter. Um, the only things that matter, I would keep, I mean, you can switch these around with each other. I would not try to switch them with other things. Um, same with these. But other than that, yeah, just go, just, just go ahead, switch them around. Um, as, ex as an example, I have S to mean this if it's in the onset, but this means Z if it's in the coda. So in the coda, the S looks like this. If you hate that, uh, just change it, write it differently. Um, but that's what I like. So I'm going to try to explain this in the easiest way possible. And so we're going to start with the nucleus, basically the vowel, although you can have syllabic consonants, but let's talk about the vowels, right? You have a vowel. They're all right here. So just write it, right? Just write it. Okay. Now, your syllable, since it's a syllable, will always have a nucleus. Sometimes it doesn't have a coda, sometimes it doesn't have an onset, sometimes it doesn't have either. This can be a full syllable just by itself, right? If there is an onset at the beginning, right, what letter is it? Is it one of these? In which case, you have a shortcut. If it's a ya, la, ra, or wa, and it's in the onset, assuming I know my rules well, it should be right before the nucleus. So all you have to do is modify the nucleus to look like this. You don't write these symbols again, right? So if it's a la, you change the nucleus to look like that. This would be li, le, right? If this is all that it is, if this is all that the onset is, you leave it like that. If there's another letter in the onset before the la, then you go to here. This symbol means that you take this and you extend it up and over so that you have a platform to put these next characters on, right? So let's say it was a S. Just write it up there. Let's say it was a ch. Write it like that. Right? And if you get a little more used to it, um, you don't have to start with the nucleus. You can kind of start with some of these things and work down. Um, but yeah, 
you can keep stacking these, although the onset will only ever have a few. Uh, the most onset on can have, I believe, is three. So this is three right here. See, there's the S, there's the CH, and then this uh, nucleus is being modified, so there's actually a LA in there too. Right, so that's three before the that's three before the vowel. Let's do codas. Codas come after the vowel. Uh, since we already modified the vowel, depending on what consonant comes before, we can't use that for shorthand for the coda. So instead, you see this, we write it kind of underneath into the side. So if it's a na right here, you can write it like this. If it's a ma, you can write it like this, etc. If there's a ra, you can write it like this. If there's none of these, then you don't write it. And you just go on to any of these that are in the coda. Now, these are a very specific case. Almost never will you use these. These are only if the the syllable is so long that it would look weird to add another stacked on top of each other and so instead you had one of these on the side so this is if you're hitting like two or three consonants in the coda then you can use these to put the last one on the side and make it look not as weird right but if you're just doing like one or two consonants at the end, you can just use these, right? Like that, there's just a simple one. All right, hopefully that was okay to follow along. Um, so now I'm gonna write strengths, cause that's fun. All right, so we start with sa, and we go to cha, make this, uh, we check which side the uh, vowel is on, and it's right here, so you write it like this. If it were the other way, if it was on this side, then you just write it over here. Stre, but wait, we forgot an R, but R is a shorthand that we can use, right? If we modify the nucleus to look like that, that means it's an R beforehand. And then you have a ng, which is right here. Here's another shorthand, because it's common to see this right after the nucleus. It can get a little awkward with nucleus, nuclei, I guess, that have this thing jutting out from, um, either a la or a ra because it can not get, it can give you not too much room to write these um but you can either write it kind of squished over to here or you can just write it right underneath um but i would probably recommend writing it to the side because there could be some confusion as to whether you mean a sa or a na right then we have a k we have a and so this is a point where I would resort to some of these vertical letters for the last um, S. So you can just write it right here. And yeah, that's how you write strengths. I think it's a little awkward right here. So if you wanted to optimize this for a word like strengths, I'm sure you can fiddle around um, reassigning letters. I think it looks fine. Um, this was all written with this current uh, setup, I believe, and I think it looks quite nice. So I'm happy to just stick with it, but if you wanna fiddle with it, go for it. Um, I'm gonna post a picture of this key in the description. And also, one thing to note, uh, I forgot to include H, right? Um, so, 
if you just, if you have an H in the onset, just, just draw this. Just modify the, the nucleus to look like this, but don't put anything on top. And that can mean an H. There's nothing else that looks like that, so you're good there. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Hope I didn't get anything wrong. And if you have any questions, let me know. And yeah, have an epic day.